If you're hearing this message, it's likely because you've experienced the moment. The moment when your emotions were stirred, when God grabbed your heart, and your passions compelled you into a point of saying yes, inviting a vulnerable foster child into your family. The moment when you, as a foster dad, saw your family stretch beyond what you ever imagined, your wife maxed out, your children beginning to resist the call to foster family ministry, and your foster child, yet another bad day. And it seems like on some days it gets worse. Is this really what I signed on to? You may ask. Or the moment when you as a foster mom struggle knowing that you were the one who invited this hurting child into your family. And this foster parent training was going on and you and your husband sat through it. They said it would be tough. Yet they never prepared you to cope with this unpredictable behavior and these episodes of the unknown. And now at the center of all of this is a child, a hurting child, a vulnerable child. The one that you prayed about, thought about, and eventually welcomed into your family. The one for whom you were called. Yes, called. Because Jesus called us and with an amazing love, and we turn and freely give that love away. But what's wrong with me, I ask sometimes. Is it compassion enough? Is it enough that I, I believe in Christ and I study the Bible and I pray and somehow still because of some of these choices to foster and follow into ministry, my life seems to spiral out of control? Why isn't it enough? It feels someday that there's more. Yes, Christ is the center of my family and provides a solid foundation, but it's really the starting point there's more. How do I know? Over the last 30 years, my family and I have personally fostered dozens and dozens of children, more than I try to count, for I'm fearful of being wrong on the number. And as a foster care agency that I founded eight years ago in Atlanta, together we as a, a community of caring Christian churches and people have cared for almost 600 children and loving Christian families, supported by trained and competent volunteers. At the center of all this, we continue as a family in the Hancock home and in partnership with our other churches and families to believe that Christ is the foundation of our calling. But yet with Christ, even at the center, day we struggle. Day after day we struggle. Christ sets us apart and being at the center of our family it is desperate today that we live such a way that the world does take note of the difference. That being a Christian called to follow him into really hard places of ministry will make a difference. In a culture that is desperate to restore families and to preserve the Judeo-Christian family that is inspired in the New Testament, it is because of Christ we've been called into this ministry and he is our foundation but why do I still struggle before I get too far into this I'd like to share part of my family story our two littlest ones who are with us now came to us after their mother was arrested on a routine traffic stop she had found to be driving under the influence of illegal substance we cared for the two little ones off and on over several years they would return back home, and then after a short period of time, they would return to the system. And we remained open and ready to receive them back. As years went on, it became evident that they would be available for a permanent family beyond their biological home. We saw the day coming and even began to anticipate that God would give them a permanent family. And then it seemed like unexpectedly and out of nowhere became a judicial system decision where these children would return home again. 
Our hearts were broken and the days went on and afterwards we struggled again. Here's my point. If you're serving as a foster family or if you're serving to lead foster families, or if you're managing volunteers who have committed their ways to support those who foster, can I say to you that knowing Christ and being biblically sound and spirit-led provides a foundation, but we must go deeper and further into the difficulties that which we're called. It will require a level of not just why we do what we do, but how we do it. I suggest it's around the idea of competencies. Raising someone else's children requires both Christ-centeredness, biblical literacy, spirit empowerment, but also a high level of competency to meet the emotional, psychological, and spiritual needs of hurting and vulnerable children. Here are these two kids today. The smiles on their face is a testament of Christ in us and God's presence among us. And the competencies that we have intentionally developed as foster parents and that we and our organization continue to develop into what we refer to as a foster family competency model approach. A competency is, defined, is a defined skill that can be measured, practiced, and mastered. Over time, you can develop a level of mastery to perform in a real life, high intensity level on a high predictable frequency. Companies matter. They matter because they help us raise the bar of practice and get really good at what God has called us to do. They allow our focus to be on quality and outcomes and what the end result of a permanent life for children and a family should really look like. And the skills that's required to strive, to push hard, to achieve that goal. Perf improves performance, Competencies will improve retention. It'll help bring quality with the diverse abilities to allow people to quickly get to the field of ministry and allow new families to acquire the needed skills and training to do difficult things. Self-control, self-discipline, flexibility, cross-cultural skills, interpersonal sensitivity, organization and planning are only six of these skills of 16 distinct competencies for serving as a Christ-centered, competent foster family. It took all 16 of these competencies for our family to reach where we are today with the birth mother and co-parenting of our three children. To build trust, to develop, develop cultural sensitivity, and to acquire the habits to continue to strive to work with a birth mother who continues to choose men to cohabitate with who never take her interest or the children first. It took these kind of competencies to contend with the challenges of children who we love and at times the birth parent would make hard for us to see. Today, these children are now a permanent part of our family after seven years. As permanent guardians, we still co-parent with their mother. Christian foster families, and I suggest other organizations today, all of us need to seriously consider what are the competencies needed for the long haul? We need to intentionally develop them, practice and coach each other to partner in caring Christian endeavor called foster care. For really, compassion without competence is merely empathy. And although empathy will help us break free from the inertia of our life, and perhaps even compel us to compassion, it'll take competent compassion to sustain us for generations. We must work to define and understand how to deliver competent foster care ministry and to equip the generations coming behind us to embrace it as the norm. We must move forward and have these competencies if we're to be sustained. Our children deserve it.